been a while, but here at Las Vegas during the World Series of Poker, in this one, the game of choice is a cash game at Resorts World. I buy him for 2500 in this 510 No Limit game, and in the first significant hand, I pick up pocket nines on the button. There's a cutoff raise of 30, I 3 bet to 100, and then the big blind puts in a 4 bet to 450. Folds back to me, and it's not a great price to continue, especially given that I started the hand with 2500 effective. Initial inclination is to look for a better spot, but I get stubborn, put in the additional 350, and we take a flop heads up which comes 664 with a club draw. Big Blind puts out a large C bet of 950, and I'm definitely confused by this bet size. If my opponent has aces, wouldn't she offer more typical sizing since there isn't a whole lot to be afraid of on this board? If she has kings or queens, I guess I can understand this size for a mix of value and deception. Similar to my pre-flop thoughts though, I should fold and try to find a better spot but as I mull it over, I pick up what I believe is some weak energy from my opponent. And after quite a bit of deliberation, I decide to go with my gut that she's got enough ace-kings, and I rip for 2050 effective. She kind of shrugs and calls, and we're off to a run out which comes a 10 and a king. My opponent rolls over, pocket aces. Yeah, this was a really bad punt that I can't reasonably justify. All I can say is that I went with a read and was just dead wrong this time. I reload for 3,000, and shortly after, I raise to 30 from the hijack with queen jack offsuit. Small blind calls, and we go heads up to queen 7 4 with a spade draw. After small blind checks, it's a good spot to C bet, so I fire 30, and the small blind calls. 4 suit comes a 9 of hearts, so it's a good relative blank unless my opponent has queen 9 or 7 9. Small blind checks, and I like betting again as there are a variety of draws and weaker hands to get value from, so I put out 100, and this time, Small blind fairly quickly folds. Take down a fairly straightforward one, and with red knights not working out in the first hand, I'm hoping for a better result in this next one with red eights in the cutoff. I race to 30, and the small blind calls. Flop comes jack jack deuce with a diamond draw, and just like the last hand, small blind check calls my c bet of 30. The turn comes a deuce, double pairing the board. Small blind checks, and with eights, I lean towards another bet since this hand could use some protection, and there's still value in targeting weaker pairs ace highs, and occasionally king highs. I put out a black chip, and small blind does the same. The river's not the best card as it comes to ace of hearts, and there's more bad news as small blind fires a polarized bet of 400. While this bet should represent a jack or deuce, I think he can also be doing this with an ace. The question is if he's turning some small pocket pair of king high into a bluff. I don't see the former being the case since that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So with what seems like fairly few bluffs available, I decide to painfully let this one go. That makes it 0 for 2 with pocket pairs, and I'm hoping to change that trend when I pick up pocket 6s in the big blind. Under the gun raises the 30, low jack calls, and I close the action by putting in the additional 20. We go multi-way to a flop in which I find bottom set on ace-king-6 rainbow. Very welcome sight unless of course I'm getting cooled off by the under the gun player. I check as there's under the gun, and low jack takes the green light and bets 100. Only I call, which is a great sign that I should have the best hand just about always. The turn comes with three of spades, which puts out a backdoor flush draw, and after I check, Lojack continues the aggression for 200. A bit of an interesting decision point, because while there's merit to just flatting to disguise the strength of my hand, it's going to be tough to pile money in on the river. Raising might scare a naked ace off, but since I can have some bluffs available such as king x of spades and broadway straight and combo draws, I have to check raise to 600. This is the same opponent that stacked me when I had 9, so I'm hoping that might come into play as this could look like I'm trying to get revenge through a bluff. She does go well into the tank, and after some deliberation, she decides to let it go, unfortunately. Unable to fully capitalize on the situation, but with the other pairs not working out, it looks like all I had to do was make a deal with the devil to scoop a meaningful pot. Nice to get the stack heading in the right direction, as I next pick up King Jack offsuit on the button. I race to 30 and Big Blind repops to 140. I call and the flop comes Queen Jack 9, all red. Big Blind continues for a large bet of 250 and with middle pair and a gutter, I proceed with a call. Force comes a board pairing 9 and this time Big Blind checks. I consider a bet, but this hand is one that is probably better to try and get to showdown. So I check and the river comes in offsuit 7. This time the Big Blind goes with a stop and go through a bet of 500. Definitely an interesting spot as I'm losing in hands such as ace queen, king queen, pocket kings and pocket aces. On the other hand he could have a variety of bluffs such as miss hearts and hands that contain a 10 such as pocket tens and ace 10. All that in mind I decide to make the hero play and call 
And just like the first hand, I look like an idiot as my opponent has the winning hand with ace queen offsuit. Needless to say, my reads are very off this session. All right, just taking a short break from the bad poker to share a couple of announcements. The first of which is that there's a two day event coming up at Bankers Casino in Salinas, California. It'll be my first time there, but on Saturday, July 23rd, I'll be co-hosting a meetup game with fellow friends and vloggers, Doug McCusker and Kenichi from KM Poker. We'll be playing two five no limit from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can sign up via the Poker Atlas app or website. On the following day, Sunday, July 24th, there'll be a $365 tournament that starts at 10 a.m. You can sign up anytime over that weekend and it's actually gonna be a bounty event. So if you knock any of us out, that's actually gonna be an added benefit to your bank account. So hope to see some of you out there. And then on the following week, I'll be heading to Los Angeles, California on August 6th and co-hosting another meetup game, this time with Fish Poker and Doug McCusker. We'll be playing 2-3 No Limit from 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. And you can also sign up via Poker Atlas. I'll put the link in the description box below. Hope to see you guys there. All right, with some tilt officially creeping in and being stuck in the neighborhood of 3,200, this next hand develops with 9-10 offsuit on the button. I unfortunately did not have this one recorded, but I raised to 30 and I met by a re-raise to 140 from the small blind. Not in the folding mood at this point as I make a loose call, and for my bad play, I get thoroughly rewarded on a flop of Jack-8-7 rainbow. I get more good news as small blind continues for a relatively large bet of 240. Not entirely sure what to make of this bet, but given the rainbow board texture, I'm discounting some sets and weighing him towards over pairs or suited broadways with back doors. I put in the 240 and the turn comes the ace of diamonds, which is a great card as I still have the nuts. Small blind checks this time and definitely have a mandatory bet. So with the plan to get it in on the river, I go with the sizing of 650. Sure, this might fold out hands such as pocket queens or kings, but given my somewhat splashy and bad image at this table, I don't think he's folding those hands, and he could very well have an ace. Good news is that he does put in calling chips, and the river comes a seven of clubs. Small blind checks, and this is one of the better cards in the deck, as the draws break out. I could occasionally get cooled off by aces full, but I imagine that hand would check raise jam the turn more often than not, and if he somehow has 7-8 suited, then he's just going to get it all. I rip for 12-80, and he pretty quickly calls. Never great to get snapped, but after I turn it over, he disgustingly mucks. Very fortunate to scoop a big one with both a marginal hand and some bad play. I then lose a couple of small hands before picking up pocket aces. I reach a 30 from under the gun and pick up calls from the hijack and button. We take a flop three ways and it's a good one as I make top set on ace queen eight rainbow. I continue with a bet of 30 and good news as both players call. Force becomes a good card as it's the six of spades so I still have the nuts and this time I get tricky and check. I get a positive development as the hijack bets 150 and the button folds. The hijack is the same opponent that stacked me in the first hand and given what I've observed thus far, she seems to be dense towards value. Generally in this spot I like a check raise since there are draws such as spades, jack 10 for a double gutter, as well as value hands that can call. But perhaps overemphasizing my perception of this opponent, I just call hoping to gain more value on the river, which is as clean as it gets with the three of diamonds. I check. And my opponent plays me like a fiddle and checks back. I roll over the winning hand and she happily shows ace 10 of spades for losing the absolute minimum. Despite some run good, I find yet another hand to butcher in the process. And well, I get another chance with this exact hand, same suit in position, and I open for 30. This time only the low jack calls and what do you know, the flop comes ace nine deuce giving me top set once again. Unlike the previous hand, I choose not to see bet since there are fewer hands that can call, and the low jack checks back. Turn comes the three of clubs completing the rainbow, and this time I bet 40, hoping he caught with something. He does continue, and the river comes another three, giving me the nut house. And with my opponent playing a wide array of hands, it's not out of the realm of possibility that he has a three. Hoping to target that, any pair, or perhaps he might be inspired to make a play, I bet 120. He does go into the tank, and after some deliberation, he thinks better of it and folds. Always nice to have the nuts from start to finish and back to back hands. And while it's going to be a bit of a disappointment when more chips aren't drug in, as the saying goes with the big pair, it's always good to nut a small one than to not nut at all. Going back to my Asian roots though, I get a more familiar sight with a smaller pair as I get dealt red eights for the second time this session. I raise a 30, low jack and high jack call, 
and the flop comes 9-5-3 with a club draw. This is a board that I'll be whiffing a lot, and while 8 is incentivized to bet, I check and action checks through. The turn comes a 7 of diamonds, so I pick up a gutter, and this time I bet 50 for value, and only the low jack calls. River comes a 10 of spades, and it's a bit of a close spot. I consider a thin value bet to target a 7 or 5, but decide to check it to keep my options open should my opponent bet, and he checks it back. I turn over the 8s, which is good as it shows a 7 of spades, so perhaps miss out on a bit of thin value, but after winning 4 consecutive hands, I get back to the one that started it all with a 9-10, this time suited in spades. Unfortunately, I'm a bit rusty with the vlogging as it's been a while, and I failed to record once again. But I start the action off by raising the 30 from middle position, and the same opponent that I beat with a 9-10 the last time, repops the 110. And well, if I'm continuing with the offsuit variety, I'm definitely not folding this one, and we go heads up to jack 7-3 with two spades and a diamond, so I flop hard with a combo draw. I check, and low jack checks back. I get help immediately as I go from 10 high to a flush with a deuce of spades on the turn. I fire 150, and my opponent calls. Admittedly, I'm starting to feel a little bad about holding over this particular opponent, who's a tough player, but the virtual enema is still in play with the clean five of diamonds on the river. Can debate what sizing is best, but I try to think of a sizing I'd go with if I didn't have a made hand, and I settle on 430. My opponent doesn't seem to like it, which is a good sign that he's not contemplating a raise, and after a minute or so, he decides to put in the call. I table the winning hand, and although my opponent is not thrilled, Credit to him for taking a couple of tough beats in stride. I do end up losing a few small pots after this, but in the last notable hand to share, I raise a 30 from the button with queen nine offsuit. Small line calls and the flop comes nine four deuce, once again with two spades and a diamond. After small blind checks, I see bet 40 as top pair good kicker, raised to be the best hand very often in this spot. Small blind calls and the turn comes to eight of hearts. This time small blind leads for 90. Naturally, this feels like a block bet in an effort to set his own price to see a river, and while I can begin bluff catching by just calling, I do have a very vulnerable top pair. Combined with the fact that there are draws that will want to see a river, I don't want to give him a good price for that to happen, so I kick it up to 300. Can this be considered an overplay? Yeah, it can, but it's definitely not worse than taking Jamin Burton's vlog literally by sticking in 200 big blinds with 9s and be just about drawing dead. Anyways, after some consideration, small blind ends up releasing his hand, so the good news is that I was able to battle back quite a bit, but not all the way as I did lose some back and a couple of PLO double board bomb pots to wrap up the session. Alright, that's going to wrap it up for this one. Uh, played arguably the worst poker that I've ever captured on camera. Got in the game for $5,500. At my worst point, I was stuck over $3,000. Found a way to battle back a bit and just a couple of lucky spots, obviously, with the 910 twice and ultimately cashed out 4,668. So still book a loss of 832, but much more reasonable given uh, just really how bad I played. I don't think I did a good job in terms of changing gears because prior to this cash game session, I actually made a deep run in the $400 Colossus. Uh, that event drew over 13,000 players and I ended up getting 68th place. Got through day one and day two and I was actually the first one to bust on day three, literally on the first hand. Got it in with ace five suited versus queen 10 off and uh, just couldn't double up in that spot. Pretty painful to come back for a day three and, and go, go out so quickly. But I, I don't know, still somewhat proud I guess of the moment. But anytime you uh, get knocked out of a tournament, you're just gonna have a ton of disappointment. Uh, did cash for 6,150, and with the buy-in being 400, uh, that's a profit of 5,750 in that one. I really appreciate the sweat and positive support that I got from uh, people that are close to me, uh, fellow friends and vloggers such as Doug and uh, Eric with Fish Poker, just to name a few. Uh, people, you know, sent me some nice messages on Twitter, uh, on YouTube comments, and even in person. So really thank you guys for that support and hope I can uh, make a deep run next time in, in a big time tournament. But yeah, just one more thing to touch on and I don't mean to end the video on a somber note, but I have been kicking the idea around of uh, ending the vlog. 
It's something that has crossed my mind over the last four to six weeks, and that's partially the reason I haven't put out a video in a while, but also because I was at the World Series of Poker and just wanted to focus on playing. And as you guys know, recording and editing takes a ton of time. But yeah, to be open and honest, it's been a mix of burnout combined with uh, the, the level of engagement that has really gone down on the videos, uh, more so than it's ever been for me in the past. Uh, I think that's a mix of, you know, people going out there a little bit more and not being stuck at home watching videos. Um, you know, a lot of you are out there at the World Series of Poker and the last thing you want to do is watch poker content when you're just in front of poker all day. Uh, but, you know, combined with those two things, it has um, me a little bit less motivated and inspired uh, to put out videos. That said, I did have a really great time putting this one together and I am looking forward to the upcoming meetup games. And those are always opportunities for you know me to meet a lot of you in person and break this virtual barrier. And I actually do find a lot of motivation and inspiration uh, through those events. So uh, not fully convinced that I wanna put an end to things, but it is something that I'm thinking about. Um, but you guys always do a really good job of you know being super positive in the comments uh, with the views and, and the likes and all that good stuff. So I uh, hope to keep it going at least for a few more videos. Uh, that's, that's for sure. Uh, but just wanted to kind of put that out there and kind of let you guys know what I'm thinking. Um, all that said, I really do appreciate all the support. Um, I really have uh, enjoyed this ride up to this point. And, uh, you know, we'll just see, see what happens next. But with that, I'll see you in the next video.